I'm sure all of you know about the Nile River. It is disputedly the longest river in the world and has been the lifeline for growth and development across Northeast Africa. The country that is by far the most dependent on the Nile is Egypt, where 95% of the country's 102 million people live along the river banks. In fact, Egypt's population is so concentrated along the Nile that only about 4% of the country's land is actually used by people. The unforgiving deserts that surround the Nile have only exacerbated this situation. Considering this, I don't think you'd be surprised to hear that protecting the Nile is the top priority for Egypt. Over the past century, they've signed dozens of treaties and struck numerous deals to take down any project that threatens Egypt's use of the Nile. But one project that they were not able to stop is the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, also known as the Gerd Dam. The goal of the Gerd Dam was to capture the might of the Nile River to produce enormous amounts of hydroelectric power. In fact, the dam was projected to provide 65 million Ethiopians with affordable electricity. This electricity can then be used to develop Ethiopia's service, industrial, and agricultural sectors and lift millions of Ethiopians out of poverty. But wait a minute, that sounds like a good thing. How could such a wholesome project be a negative? Well, the truth is that it's not a negative, at least not for Ethiopia. But the same cannot be said about Egypt. You see, the Nile River does not flow from north to south as you might intuitively expect. The Nile River actually flows south to north, starting in Lake Victoria located in modern-day Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya, and emptying into the Mediterranean Sea. This means that Egypt actually gets the tail end of the river, and that any operations upstream can affect how much water Egypt receives. And as you probably already guessed, the Gerd Dam is one such project. So here's the story of the dam that's threatening to end Egypt. Taking a look back, while the Gerd Dam didn't become a hot topic till the 2010s, the project has actually been discussed for nearly 70 years. In fact, the US Bureau of Reclamation identified the site of the Gerd Dam somewhere between 1956 and 1964. But work on the dam never got started due to a slew of political issues. First of all, Ethiopia was under the control of an emperor named Haile Selassie. Selassie was a controversial leader who had both good and bad intentions. On one side, he introduced the country's first written constitution, he abolished slavery, and he tried to defend Ethiopia from an Italian invasion, though he was unsuccessful at doing so. On the other side, however, he was also known for ruling with an iron fist and doing whatever it took to keep control. For example, he was known for suppressing rebellions and pushing the boundaries when it came to human rights. And let's just say there were a lot of rebellions, especially from the princes of Ethiopia, often referred to as the Mesafint. The Mesafint felt that Selassie's reforms were simply not good enough and that Ethiopia could be modernizing way faster if they were in control. Ironically, if they simply shut up, Ethiopia might have modernized faster because Selassie was spending a significant amount of time just keeping the Mesafint in check. This issue just became worse with time as the rebellions would eventually boil over and become a military coup that resulted in Selassie being assassinated in August of 1975. That wasn't the end of it either. It was actually just the beginning of a 17-year-long civil war that would take Ethiopia into the 1990s. With all this drama going on, building a dam simply wasn't a top priority for anyone. Establishing stability and peace was a far greater concern, and fortunately, Ethiopia would eventually reach some level of this by the turn of the century. At this point, they could finally start investing into the country and try to turn things around for the better. The Gerd Dam was of course one of these initiatives. Building the dam was by no means a fast process though. The Ethiopian government started off by surveying the land between October of 2009 and August of 2010, and the design of the dam would be finalized a few months later. With the initial planning out of the way, the Ethiopian government would award an Italian company named Cellini Impregolo, now known as WeBuild, with the contract to build a dam. The contract was worth $4.8 billion, and this was by no means an easy amount to put together. For perspective, when this dam was approved, the cost was over 10% of the country's GDP. So 
funding the dam was very much a national effort for a full decade. The country sold bonds to their citizens and persuaded employees to contribute a portion of their paycheck to the dam. Ethiopia also received international help from China and some Gulf countries. Construction of the dam is actually still underway and it's not expected to be completed till 2023. But most of the dam has been completed and Ethiopia started filling it up in July of 2020, which is when the controversy reached new heights. From Ethiopia's perspective, the Gerd Dam is not only a development project or an infrastructure project. The Gerd Dam is a natural right. Here's the thing, it's not like Ethiopia is crossing it into Egypt's border and directly stealing their water. In fact, Ethiopia doesn't even share a border with Egypt. They're actually separated by Sudan. Not to mention, the Blue Nile literally originates from Lake Tana which is located in Ethiopia. So, it makes no sense to Ethiopia that Egypt is trying to tell them what they can and cannot do with their own natural resources. That would be like Abu Dhabi telling Saudi Arabia to chill out on the oil production so that they can keep oil prices high. If anything, Egypt should only have the power to put in a polite request that Ethiopia consider how the dam would affect nearby countries and their people. But even if Egypt was being polite about it instead of trying to control the situation, it's not like Ethiopia has another option. It's not like they're building a vanity project like the Burj Khalifa or the Jeddah Tower. If this was the case, Egypt could argue that the welfare of Egyptians is more important than the frivolous luxury of Ethiopians. But this is not the case. Ethiopia is building the Gerd Dam out of desperate need. Ethiopia is one of the poorest countries in the world coming in at rank 170 when it comes to GDP per capita, and that's with the dam. Before the dam project, Ethiopia's GDP per capita was literally $120. Now, it's not like Egypt is killing it and is a developed country, but Egypt has arguably done far better than Ethiopia. Their current GDP per capita stands at $3,500, which is nearly four times Ethiopia. So when Ethiopia is given a choice between Ethiopians' welfare and Egyptians' welfare, the choice is obvious. It's not even a question which country is in a more desperate state. Literally over 90% of Ethiopians have been living in abject poverty for decades. So it's about time that this finally changes. We should also note that Ethiopia has been as cautious as possible every step of the way. After all, their goal is not to screw over Egypt. Their goal is to simply advance their own country, and they're more than willing to try to minimize the damages to other countries. A perfect example of this is their approach when it comes to filling up the dam itself. Ethiopia has carefully timed each filling to take advantage of the Kairam season, which takes place between June and September. This is when rainfall is at its peak, meaning that Ethiopia can fill up their dam with the minimal amount of damage. Not to mention, Ethiopia is spreading out the fills between 4 and 7 years. So there's little doubt that Ethiopia is approaching the dam as slowly and as methodologically as possible. Really, the only way Ethiopia could be more careful is to just not do the project, which is obviously not something that they're willing to do. Hearing Ethiopia's perspective, it may seem like Egypt has a hard case to defend, but it's not that simple. From Egypt's perspective, they have literally given up everything to defend the Nile. And this doesn't just apply to the Gerd Dam. Egypt has defended the Nile for centuries, and they have sacrificed so much for the river. Not to mention, they literally have legal rights to oversee and influence upstream activities. This legal right was agreed upon way back in 1929, when the Nile Waters Agreement was signed by Egypt and Great Britain. At the time, Great Britain represented Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, and Sudan. This treaty, however, did not include Ethiopia. In fact, Ethiopia really wasn't even considered. So, while Egypt does have the legal right to veto upstream Nile projects, Ethiopia argues that this right only extends to countries that are involved in the treaty. Why should Ethiopia abide by a treaty that they weren't even involved in? This wasn't the only treaty that Ethiopia was left out of, either. 
1959, Egypt and Sudan formed an agreement to split the Nile water. Egypt had rights to 55.5 billion cubic meters of Nile water, and Sudan had rights to 18.5 billion cubic meters of Nile water. So, once again, from Egypt's perspective, they literally have the legal right to X cubic meters of water. And when Ethiopia's activities threaten that supply, they feel that they have the right to fight against Ethiopia. At the same time though, Ethiopia wasn't involved in this discussion either. So why should they follow this treaty? Ethiopia can only pull out the we weren't even involved card on these two agreements though, because they were very much involved in the Cairo cooperation framework of July 1993. This was an agreement directly between Egypt and Ethiopia. In this agreement, both countries pledged not to implement water projects harmful to the interests of the other and consult over projects to reduce waste and increase the flow of waters. While Ethiopia had deniability with the other agreements, this one is as clear as day. Ethiopia literally agreed to make decisions together with Egypt. But when it came to the GERD dam, it seems like they took a solo approach. I think you can start to see why Egypt thinks that Ethiopia is in the wrong. Also, Egypt doesn't just have a legal basis against Ethiopia, but also a humanitarian one. While Egypt is more well-off than Ethiopia economically, this doesn't mean that they're in a position where they can negotiate on the Nile. 97% of Egypt's fresh water comes from the Nile. And the Nile's water flow has already been on a decline over the past several decades. Combine this with Egypt's rapidly growing population and you're left in a position where Egypt is facing an annual water deficit of 7 billion cubic meters. At the current deficit, Egypt could run out of water by 2025. Considering this, who actually has the greater natural right to the Nile? Is it Ethiopia where much of the water originates or is it Egypt where much of the water is actually used? The fight between Ethiopia and Egypt is still very much an ongoing situation and is extremely fluid. By the time the GERD dam is filled up, some studies suggest that the Nile's freshwater flow to Egypt may be reduced by 25%. Additionally, the electricity produced by Egyptian dams may be reduced by one third. This would likely take a massive toll on the agriculture that takes place around the Nile, which accounts for 60% of Egypt's food. On the other hand, the GERD dam has already started paying off for Ethiopia despite not even being complete. I mean, just take a look at Ethiopia's GDP over the past 10 years. The dam was of course not the only project contributing to this rise, but it definitely played a major role. Given that the GERD dam will become the largest hydropower facility in Africa once completed, Ethiopia likely has a lot more benefits to reap from the GERD dam, but that's only if the rest of it is filled. Who do you think is in the right, Egypt or Ethiopia? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you hope that both countries are able to sort this out before the situation becomes irreversible. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.